Welcome to part 2 of the AI Plays Football Tutorial Series. In part 1, we went over installing uh, the Google Football Environment and I hope everyone was able to get that working because uh, today we are going to build upon that and get to the more interesting part of this project. So we saw before how a typical reinforcement learning setup works and Today, uh, we will take a look at a specific type of a reinforcement learning algorithm known as Proximal Policy Optimization or PPO. So, let's dig a bit into how this agent on the left here is designed under this algorithm. First, we have a neural network model known as the actor, which performs the task of understanding what action to take under a particular state. So it takes the observed state as input and produces an action as output. In our case, it takes the image of the game as input and gives a particular action like shoot or pass as output. Then we send this action to the environment and observe what happens in the game. If something positive happens like a goal, then our environment sends back a positive response or a positive reward like plus one. If an own goal occurs due to our action, then we get back a negative reward, like minus one. This reward is taken in by another neural network model known as the critic. The job of this model uh, is to critic the action taken by the actor. So you can imagine, it's like a movie reviewer uh, critiquing a particular movie produced by the actor model. So in essence, the critic model's task is to observe a state and give its judgment on how good it is to be in that state. This information is conveyed back to the actor for training by a custom loss function, which is actually the heart of the PPO algorithm. But don't worry about that for now. We will take a look at that in the next part of this series. Today, let's just implement the actor and critic models in our code. Now. An important step in the PPO algorithm is to run through this entire loop with the two models for a fixed number of steps known as PPO steps. So essentially, we are interacting with our environment for a certain number of steps and collecting the states, actions, rewards, etc. And we will use this information later on for training our actor and critique models. Now let's continue our code from where we left off last time. We'll start with defining a few Python list objects uh, that will be used to store information like the observed states, the actions, rewards, etc. when we are interacting with our environment. So let's have states equal to an empty list, then actions, then values. Uh, this one comes from the value that our critic model uh, generates. Okay, uh, next one is masks. A uh, mask variable is simply used to check if the game is in an over or completed state because uh, then you want to stop and restart the game. And of course, we will collect the rewards as well. Okay, now let's interact with our environment for PPO steps number of times, which uh, we can set to 128. So this means in PPO, our first step is to collect 128 interactions with the game and record all of that information. Now let's interact with the game using step function. We need to pass as argument the index of the action that we want to take. So let's just pick a random action for now. We'll change this later on. So this should return the next state or observation after taking this action. The reward obtained for this action. Then the done variable, uh, which is like the mask, uh, which indicates if the game is over or not. And uh, also some additional info. If the game is done, we want to hit reset and continue with the loop until 128 interactions are complete. 
Now we can try to run this code and see our random action agent perform in the game. Great. Now instead of getting a random action, let's define our actor model to give us that action instead. So let's call it get model actor image image because our input to this particular model will be an RGB image coming from the game. Now let's get all the required imports out of the way first. Uh, import keras.backend as k. Uh, we'll, we'll see why, why we are importing this later on. Uh, now let's just import the uh, modules for various neural network layers that we will use. Then the model import itself from Keras. We will also need the optimizer in order to compile our network. Now let's import a pre-trained image feature extractor. Uh, in order to process the image that comes in from the game. I'm using MobileNet v2 version 2 here, but uh, you can choose any pre-trained network of your choice. Just go to the Keras website and see what options there are available. Okay, now we need to define the input shape of our image. Uh, let's get this from the function parameter. Now we'll define the mobile net feature extractor. So weights equal to image net for loading up the pre-trained weights. Include top equals to false. This means we will remove the classification layers at the end of the pre-trained uh, ImageNet model and replace them with our own. Now let's just loop through all these layers and uh, make their weights fixed or in other words set uh, trainable to false as we do not want to train the feature extractor again. We'll only train the new layers we add on top here. So we'll have x equal to flatten. Uh, this is to flatten out the output of mobile net, which uh, takes state as input. Now next layer, let's add a fully connected uh, dense layer with uh, 1024 neurons. Uh, set activation to ReLU. and uh, input will be x from the previous layer. Now the output, uh, let's define it as out underscore actions equals to dense uh, layer again, but uh, number of output nodes here will be equal to the number of actions we want to predict uh, the probability distribution over. So let's set activation to be softmax and uh, input is x again from the previous layer. Now let's combine all these layers in our Keras model. Input node is state underscore input. And uh, the output node will be out underscore actions. Let's compile the model now. Optimizer uh, will use Adam with uh, learning rate LR set to 
10 to the minus 4 and uh, loss um, for loss let's just use uh, mean square error for now uh, this will actually get replaced with the uh, custom loss from the PPO algorithm uh, but we'll take a look at this later on uh, right now let's just return this compiled model